Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on calculating a further bound for a formula given a subtraction. Now I'm assuming this video you're already familiar with finding the lower bound and upper bound of a measured quantity. So let's read this question. We've got A which is B minus C and we're told what B is and what it's rounded to and we're told what C is and what it's been rounded to to get that number. We want to determine the upper bound of A. Now just to note that for B, B could be any value between the lower bound of this number and the upper bound of this number. So let's think about the lower bound and upper bound of B and the lower bound and upper bound of C first. So B lower bound, LB for lower bound, and B upper bound, UB for upper bound. What's the biggest that B could have been? Now think, what's the lowest this could have been rounded to two significant figures? Well, it's 225, because that, to two significant figures, would be 230. But if I had 224, for example, that would round to 220 to two sigma figures. And the upper bound is going to be 235, but I'm not going to go into too much detail there because we explored that in a previous video. What about C, the lower bound, and the upper bound? Well, the lower bound is going to be 105.65. And when you're rounding to decimal places, the quick way to do it for the lower bound and upper bound is to reduce the last digit by 1, so the 7 becomes 6, and stick a 5 on the end. And for the upper bound, you just stick a 5 on the end, so 105.75. And we want to determine the upper bound of A. So B can be anywhere between these two values. C could have been anywhere between these two values. And we want to get the upper bound, the biggest possible value of A. Now, if we want to get the upper bound of A, what do we use for the B and what do we use for the C? If I want a big value for A, I should start with a big value and subtract as small a number as possible because the smaller the number you subtract, the bigger the result you get. So we want to use the upper bound for B and the lower bound for C. Just use common sense to work out whether we use the upper bound or the lower bound. So the upper bound for B was 235, and the lower bound for C was 105.65. And if we do that on our calculator, we get uh, 129.35. So that's the biggest A could have possibly been. Let's work out the lower bound as well, even though the question didn't ask for it. Well, we should start with a small number for B, so the lower bound, and then we want to subtract a big number, so the upper bound of C, because the bigger the number we subtract, the smaller the result we get. So we're going to get as small a smaller number as possible. So lower bound here is 225, upper bound of C is 105.75, and that gives me 119. 0.25. So that's the smallest A could have possibly been, and that's the biggest that A could have possibly been.